Hello students, how are you all? Are you studying properly at home? I know all of you are. Hope the last video was helpful in understanding the explained topics. Today, I am back again to explain some more topics from the chapter motion. So, let's start. Today, we all are going to learn about speed. Distance traveled per unit time is called speed. Speed is denoted by S and it can be derived by the formula distance by time. Its unit is meter per second. In case of non-uniform motion, speed can be derived by total distance divided by total time. Then also its unit will remain meter per second. Speed doesn't have any direction. If we add direction with speed, it becomes velocity. Speed along with direction is called velocity. Its unit is also meter per second. Now let us move on to scalar quantities. Quantities which have only magnitude but no direction are called scalar quantities. Like there are certain quantities which have only a numerical number and an unit associated with it. But from that we cannot find any direction. Like if I tell you about 1 kg of rice, does it uh, indicate any direction? No. So those type of quantities which have no direction associated with it is known as scalar quantities. Here are some examples like speed, distance. These are certain quantities which can give us a certain value but it does not indicate any direction. This type of quantities are called scalar quantities. And vector quantities are those which have both magnitude as well as direction. That means from there we can find out in which direction that particular quantity is moving like displacement. You people remember that when I taught about displacement I told you about going from point A to point B. That means I am going in a specific direction. I am following a specific direction in order to move from A to B. Thus displacement contains both magnitude as well as direction. And in, the, in this definition only we have learned that velocity also contains direction. Thus displacement and velocity both are examples of vector quantity. Acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change in velocity. That means with the help of acceleration we can calculate the change in velocity that takes place in a particular period of time. It is denoted by A. Acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. Now in order to find the change in velocity we need to subtract initial velocity from final velocity. Acceleration is denoted by A. Final velocity is denoted by V and initial velocity is denoted by U and we all know that time is denoted by t. So a equal to v minus u by t. With the help of this formula we can find out the acceleration. Unit of acceleration is meter per second square. Acceleration can be both positive as well as negative. If the final velocity is greater than the initial velocity acceleration is positive. But if initial velocity is greater than final velocity, acceleration will be negative. In that case, we will rename acceleration as retardation. Whenever we are going to find the value of A to be negative, we will call it retardation. Now, we all are going to learn about graphical representation of motion. By graphical representation of motion, we mean to represent the motion of a particular object on a graph paper. 
There are two types of graphs that are included in your syllabus. The first one is a distance time graph and the second one is a velocity time graph. These are just the examples of distance time graph and the velocity time graph. I have kept this place open so that I can show you how to draw the different types of graphs and what each one of them represents. The first thing that you should notice that this is the point of origin. This here is O, O for origin. The time always remains on the x-axis and in case of distance time graph, the distance remain on the, will remain on the y-axis and in case of velocity time graph, the velocity will remain on the y-axis. Let us first start with a distance time graph. If the distance time graph is a straight line passing through the origin, it represents uniform motion. That means equal distances are traveled in equal intervals of time. Next, if the distance time graph is a curved line, it will represent a non-uniform motion. That means unequal distances are traveled in equal intervals of time or equal distances are traveled in unequal intervals of time. Always remember that distance time graph never points downwards since distance never in decreases in case of a moving body. Now let us move on to velocity time graph. If the velocity time graph is a straight line passing through the origin as I have drawn here, it will represent an accelerated motion. That means in case of this graph, the final velocity is always greater than the initial velocity. That means the value of A, that is acceleration, is positive. Next, here the velocity time graph is a straight line parallel to the time axis. This type of graph tells us that the motion of the body is uniform. That means no change of velocity is taking place here. So we can say that initial velocity is equal to final velocity. In that case acceleration will be zero. In the next case the velocity time graph is pointing downwards. That means here the final velocity is less than the initial velocity. That means the value of acceleration will be negative. And we all know that if the value of acceleration is negative, we call it retardation. So the graph of the retardation will look like this. You can refer to book page number 104, 105 and 106 for the diagram of the graphs. Today I have explained the topics speed, velocity, scalar quantity, vector quantity, acceleration and graphical representation of motion. Hope the explanation help you in understanding the chapter properly. Next week I'll meet you again with the explanation of the remaining parts of the chapter. Until then, take care.